G'day folks, Scott here. Today I'm reviewing Mission Impossible Fallout. Just quickly before I start, a quick apology for my subscribers. I haven't done a review in about four weeks now. Let me show you why. And this is the reason why. This little guy is named Loki. We got him about a month ago and he keeps me entertained and very busy all the time. Say hi mate. This is the sixth movie in the Mission Impossible franchise. I was pretty surprised by that, I had to count. I liked the first one that Brian De Palma made. It was well written, well acted, had some cool action in it. Uh, the second one that John Wynn made was fucking awful. And the rest of them have all been okay, you know. I've generally gone into them pretty reluctantly and I've genuinely come out of them thinking, if nothing else, it had some really cool action scenes. And this is no different. Um, I didn't know anything about this. I hadn't watched the trailers as always. Uh, so, you know, all I knew was Henry Cavill was in it now. Um, and, you know, so I went in and saw it blind today. Uh, my first thing when I saw my ticket was this immense running time. It's around 2 hours 40. Uh, that's probably a bit too long for a Mission Impossible film. And it put me in a bit of a stink mood right from the go. I was sitting there going, oh man, I just really don't feel like sitting through a long-ass Tom Cruise movie. In its defense, it actually went pretty quick. There was some slow times, there was some pacing issues, but for the most part, I was surprised how much I enjoyed it. And that was really down to Henry Cavill. I was really surprised. Um, I've found he's pretty good as Superman, but he's generally, I've never seen him in anything else that's done anything for me. But he was great in this. He um, had you know good chemistry and had the old familiars show up with you know Simon Pegg and Ving Rhames and... Tom Cruise and those two guys have a good chemistry together. They work well together. I'm obviously used to seeing them together after so many films, and it's good. Um, it's somewhat a convoluted story. It's very long-winded, but like I said, it wasn't entirely boring, and I was quite surprised. There were some monumental action sequences in there. As always, Tom Cruise with his own stunts. He broke his ankle jumping from one building to another that they kept in the movie. There's a cool motorbike chase and some car chases and a helicopter chase and all that. And it was really well done. I really don't have that much to say about it, you know. I honestly expected to hate it. I'm honestly surprised that I didn't. I had a fun time. If you've never liked a Mission Impossible movie, you're not going to change your mind. But if you found the first one, and specifically your three onwards, to be entertaining enough and action-filled enough that you want to want more, go for it. It's probably the best one in a long time. So that's it. Mission Impossible was actually pretty good. The next movie I'll be back to review will be The Meg. So as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.